So dexamethasone, as you've said, it's actually been on the market for about 60 years. Uh, and it's one of the steroids that we have. So it's in the steroid class of drugs. What it mainly does, as what all steroids do, is, is really to reduce inflammation. And what these drugs do is they suppress the body's immune system. We've talked a little bit about how when COVID-19 becomes quite severe, patients have pneumonia, end up on oxygen, end up in the ICU. The thinking is that it's more so the body's response to the virus than the virus itself. So dexamethasone might be suppressing that overreaction of our immune system to this virus, and that's why people might be doing better with this drug. And when they tried it in this trial on a very ill coronavirus patients, Dr. Gupta, what did they find? Yeah, that's what's really important here is compared to any other drug. So first of all, no drug has shown an improvement in survival. This is the first drug to do that. The other drug that's had a positive trial is remdesivir. We, we've talked about that drug, but all that really did was to reduce the number of days in hospital, and it wasn't in the sickest patients. The difference here is that this drug seems to be effective in the sickest patients, and about 40, in this trial, about 40% of those patients died. And with this drug, that number went from, I think, 41% down to about 26%, at least from what we can calculate from what's released in the press release. So about a 15% absolute reduction, 14 to 15% absolute reduction in the number of people who die. And that's a really important, that's a really big number for patients who are this sick. So you understand that, or, or maybe you share, I mean, the excitement level that we're picking up globally. Can you explain that? Very much so. You know, this has been very difficult um, from the medical point of view because we're not used to not being able to help our patients, not having much to offer our patients other than support. Um, and we've been supporting patients through this, but there's a desperation that's out there. And, and you're seeing all of these experimental uh, drugs being tried. You're seeing families asking for them. You're seeing doctors actually trying them because we don't have anything else to do. And so here's something that is readily available. It's inexpensive. And if this trial pans out, and you've got to see the trial, want to see the actual paper, but if it pans out and there are no red flags there, then here we have something that is actually going to make a real difference in the outcomes of our sickest patients. Um, and so this is this is really big news. Okay, pause on that for just a second. But yes, you just highlighted again what what I'm picking up in terms of why researchers are excited. It's a common drug. It is cheap, and it seems to be having significant impacts and actual measurable results in terms of death rate. But you raise the red flags. And, and Dr. Teresa Tam did so yesterday. In fact, uh, speaking for Canada's perspective, how we need to see the results before we proceed and before this becomes standard of care. Uh, what do doctors yet need to see in all of this uh, in the findings? Well, we need to see the paper. You know, there, you know the press release is a, is a brief statement about the main outcomes. Uh, what we need to understand is, you know, who were these patients? Uh, what exactly was the treatment? How was the treatment assigned? Was it truly random? Uh, this is a randomized controlled trial, but there are uh, different ways in which randomized trials can be compromised. And we want to make sure that this was done in a fashion that didn't involve any bias. Sometimes unconscious bias creeps in. And so we want to make sure that those methods were rigorous and that the study is thus believable. And until we read that paper, until it goes through peer review, we won't know that for sure. Um, I'll caution that a couple of major COVID papers were retracted not long ago from major journals. Um, so we've got to be sure before we mm -hmm. change our practice. Um, this is really exciting. We want to see the paper. We're eager to see the paper, but there are things in that paper we're going to want to scrutinize. Would one of those things be side effects? I mean, we are talking about a steroid here. Right. Side effects are expected. In fact, Heather, we have uh, quite a bit of data uh, on the use of steroids in ICU populations. In fact, in populations very similar to the COVID-19 ventilated patients, uh, patients with a condition called acute respiratory distress syndrome. Steroids have been tried in, th in this population. Uh, those are folks on a ventilator. Uh, patients with severe pneumonia we've treated with steroids as well, and there are trials out there. Um, and, and steroids can be effective in those populations, but they do cause side effects. Uh, they often will cause the sugars to rise, so hyperglycemia, we call that in the ICU population. Uh, they'll cause over time loss of muscle mass. They'll cause confusion in patients. Uh, over time, they also predispose to other infections. So there are many side effects from steroids that we have to be aware of. If there's truly a mortality benefit, if we're going to be saving lives with this drug, we will accept those side effects. Uh, but we want to see that and know that before we administer a drug with so many potential side effects. 
finally, picking up on what we heard from British health authorities just to, in introducing you, Dr. Gupta, uh, the, the hope that with this drug, researchers can then build on this. What could this mean to subsequent treatments? And you mentioned remdesivir. Could it be used with remdesivir? Are these kinds of questions for the future to build on this potentially? I think what's really important to note here is that because partly because this trial seems to be so impressive and also partly because we're so desperate for a therapy, we're not going to be waiting for confirmation. We're not going to be waiting for more trials. The minute we see that study, unless there are red flags, this will become the new standard of care. So what that means is that, you know, the maybe 1,000 other treatment trials going on will all be affected by this. None of those trials can be placebo controlled anymore in the sense that everybody is going to have to also be offered this drug. Dexamethasone will become standard of care, so all of those trials will have to be changed. And all future data will really be understanding the combination of dexamethasone, particularly in these sick patients, and whatever other drug is being trialed, and many other drugs, including remdesivir, are being trialed. But I suspect, clinically for now, people will start combining other drugs with dexamethasone, but all of the trials will also change, and we'll get an answer to that question as those trials come out.